up uh, Carlton. I've been following Octopi on Facebook and stuff for a while. This is actually my first year. Welcome to here. I'm uh, Will Hopkins. I'm the director of New Hampshire Peace Action, a member of Iraq Veterans Against the War, uh, and a, uh, a former national board member of Veterans for Peace. Um, it's one of the folks in that initial meeting of Occupy NH, um, and I have prepared remarks for today. Um, they'd probably take me a little more than two minutes to read, but not much more. Um, I don't think the people they were intended for showed up to this particular GA. Um, <laughs> oh, wait, I'm not sure what, so which way I should go on that one. Um, and so I, I, I'm not sure if, if it's worth my time to, to read them. Um, however, Garrett's got a camera. Um, and if they can get online, maybe some, somebody will see them. So I'd like a temperature check before I just launch off on a tirade. I'd like to hear it. I'd like to hear it. I'd like to hear it. All right. All right. Um, when, I, when I talk to people anywhere in this country, I, I see a set of common values. A belief that all Americans have a right to pursue the American dream, which by my understanding is nothing more than the right to work hard, earn a living wage, keep food on the table, bring your kids to the doctor when they're sick, perhaps own a home, maybe retire when you've grown old enough that you can't work anymore. People are sick of war. Uh, it's not that we Americans are a peaceful people, uh, so far from it, um, but people only want to go to war to defend this country. Americans by and large recognize that all of the wars and conflicts, big and small, that we're engaged in are about enriching the interests that have invested heavily in electoral politics. Americans have come to recognize that our Congress, Senate, and Commander-in-Chief are not working for us, but rather working to stifle anything that challenges the interests that fund ele elections. We've come together here to occupy an opposition to the corporate state, crony capitalism, and a game that's been rigged against common people. We let the same interests who pick our politicians make the news, write the story of our country, and let us hear only the narrative approved. They've manufactured a world where the left is MSNBC and the right is Fox News. And if you think the bailouts were theft, you must be crazy. If you think endless war is not moral or just, or that money and not freedom and democracy are what dictate our foreign policy, well, you must be crazy. If you think anything that hurts the folks who fill the politicians' election coffers or damages those megacorps that control our media or threatens their cozy, dual-lobed corporate party, and the piles of wealth, power, and privilege it brings to those who, have dubbed, who we have dubbed the 1%. You must be crazy. Then came Occupy, which is kind of this universal recognition of what the beast is. And here in New Hampshire, thanks to the Free State Party, it's a movement that's crossed party lines and ideology to fight that system. For the first time in my short life, I felt a glimmer of hope. Maybe someday we can gain the power to challenge the system. Maybe change it. Maybe even tear it down and build something better together. I don't put a lot of credence in Rand or Rothbard. I'd say Marx is probably my favorite economist. Um, but what I recognize here is that people who share my outlook on this system and have the will to change it are few and far between. Most people are content to eat their Big Mac and work at the Gap as long as they make it home in time to keep up with the Kardashians. As long as our opponents in this struggle control the media, they control the story. As long as they control the police, local, county, fed, federal, secret, and public police. As long as they control the military, they control an absolute monopoly on violence. And we who understand how this system works and dream of justice, whatever that means to each of us, are few and have little power against all that light and sound and all those guns and all that money. What I'm trying to say is this. The American dream has been destroyed. There is no more upward mobility because the haves make the rules and the have-nots have no say. I killed people in Iraq. People who were just trying to defend their homeland from foreign invaders. I have a lifetime worth of penance to pay. I intend to pay it fighting the corporate state. I, in I intend to fight as long and as hard as I can. I don't think any of us can afford to exile, schism, or expel anyone who challenges that beast. I've made a personal and absolute commitment to nonviolence. But figurative, figuratively speaking, we have a long war ahead of us. And we are desperately outmanned, outgunned, and outfinanced. As far as I'm concerned, we need every blade we can call up. And we're still hopeless underdogs. I'm a raging, ble ble bleeding heart liberal. Uh, but I love those members of the FSP who have had the courage to come amongst us and try to work together to shake this system. 
I know there is hurt from the schisms, but if any of you will still stand with me and with us, I believe we can be an example to the rest of the country and the rest of the world, if indeed the 99% can be awakened. Then maybe we have a chance to challenge the corporate state. For surely, if we cannot accept that other people in this movement hold other viewpoints, we don't stand a chance.